This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Last week, the Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, announced her intention to resign. Now, very few people expected this resignation from the woman who led her party to victory in two Scottish parliamentary elections and three UK general elections. But now it seems that the SNP will soon need to select a new leader who can inspire confidence and keep her dream of an independent Scotland alive. The question, though, is that possible? Will the SNP be able to achieve independence without their election winner? Well, let's take a look. Since Sturgeon resigned, three candidates have stated their intention to take over as leader. Hamza Youssef, Kate Forbes and Ash Reagan. Now, while Sturgeon had her fair share of detractors and after leading her country for eight years has had her fair share of scandals too, the current leadership candidates seem to have their own set of problems before they've even got the job, which could make winning over new voters quite tricky. Hamza Youssef, for example, has had a number of ministerial roles, including transport minister and Europe minister, and is currently Scotland's health secretary. However, Youssef's time as health secretary has been criticised. For example, currently the number of people waiting in A&E for less than four hours is less than 69%. Under Nicola Sturgeon in 2011, it was about 96%. Under Alex Neal in 2013, it was about 94%. Under Shona Robinson in 2015, it was about 91%. And under Jesse Freeman in 2020, it was about 90%. So there are already questions that if he can't lead on health, then how could he possibly lead the SNP? As for Kate Forbes, she has some pretty conservative views on issues like trans rights and is a member of a church which has some pretty controversial views on marriage too. That's because Forbes is a member of the Free Church of Scotland, an evangelical church which believes there are just a few circumstances where abortion can be justified and which opposes gay marriage. She's also on the record for saying that the Scottish government should not rush to change the definition of male and female, leading many to fear that she might alienate socially liberal voters. Ash Reagan is probably the least well-known of the three, but she's also caused some controversy with her views. For example, she's also been outspoken about trans rights, saying that she would abandon the gender recognition reform bill if she were to take over. In fact, she even resigned from her position in the Scottish government to vote against the bill. The point we're trying to make here is that while Sturgeon said in her leaving speech that in departing, the SNP would get a chance to reinvigorate itself with a new leader who the people of Scotland don't have any preconceptions about, it doesn't seem like this is the case. And this is deeply relevant to the independence cause because of the strategy that Sturgeon had planned on achieving Scottish independence through. In essence, after the Supreme Court ruled that she couldn't hold an independence referendum without the permission of the UK government, she planned that her party, the SNP, would fight the next general election, expected by the end of 2024, as a de facto independence referendum. If the SNP won more than 50% in that election, Sturgeon would argue to Westminster that there was a mandate for an independent Scotland, or at least another referendum. The problem is that this strategy is yet to be approved by the party and was set to be fully decided upon at an upcoming special party conference next month. But that conference has now been delayed while the party elects a new leader. And that new leader might have their own very different plans. Hamza Youssef has stated in recent days that he has concerns about the plan and Kate Forbes has called for a reset of the plan. Ash Reagan, though, has claimed this week that she'll revive Sturgeon's plans if she gets elected, but she has modified it slightly, claiming that if pro-independence parties win 50.1% of elections in Scotland in either Westminster or Holyrood, then she'll consider this to be a clear instruction by the people to begin negotiations. Possibly more important, though, whether the new leader of Scotland implements Sturgeon's plans or not, they'll need to win the next election in order to achieve their aims. Either they go for Sturgeon's plan, in which winning the election is a prerequisite anyway, or they go for another plan, for instance trying to renegotiate with Westminster, in which they would still ideally need power. After all, it's hard to argue that you represent the opinion of the people when you're sat on the back benches. So the question is, with a new leader, one of these potential candidates, does the SNP really stand a chance of winning the next election? 
Well, S&P polling numbers have already been dropping for a number of years now. Around the time of the 2019 election, the S&P's polling numbers were in the high 40s and low 50s. And in the election itself, the S&P received 45% of the vote. Immediately after the election, though, their polling numbers started to go up, with their peak coming during the early pandemic at 54%. Since then, though, their polling numbers have declined through 47% in 2021, all the way down to 41% in November 2022. It's also worth considering that the SNP losing Sturgeon means that at a time of gradual decline, they've also lost a huge electoral asset. Historically, Sturgeon has been hugely popular in Scotland, with her being more popular than Billy Connolly or Andy Murray in 2015, as well as most Scots thinking that she's changed the country for the better. So without her, and with a contentious new leader, the SNP's struggles may be about to get worse. And at the same time, Labour's new Scottish leader has proven to be remarkably popular. And worryingly for the SNP, YouGov polling for the Scottish election survey, taken just before Sturgeon's resignation, already had the SNP on 38%, just two points ahead of Scottish Labour. It would mean the SNP losing something like 15 seats in the next general election. On top of that, the fact that the SNP are currently arguing about gay marriage, something that was settled nearly a decade ago because of the views of one of its leadership hopefuls, suggests that inter-party divisions on all sorts of issues could spring up in the post-Sturgeon era. And this could further damage the SNP's electoral chances. Clearly then, things aren't looking good for the independence cause. If the SNP lose the elections or have a reduced seat share, not only do their plans for independence go out the window, but another unionist party, like Labour, are set to benefit. Ultimately then, those wanting independence in Scotland should hope that whoever takes control of the SNP next is able to unite the party, become popular with the electorate, and succeed in the next set of elections. Right now though, it's just too early to tell whether any of this is likely to happen. Ultimately, though, we all want to be that kind of person who learns something new every day. That's likely why you watch our videos. And that makes sense, because everyday learning keeps us sharp and makes us and the world around us more interesting. But the reality is that daily learning is hard to do. And that's where Brilliant.org comes in. That's because Brilliant.org is the best way to learn vital skills, like maths, computer science, and decision making, interactively. And Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced maths, to the latest artificial intelligence, data science, neural networks, and more with new lessons added monthly and staying on top of the latest developments and trends that you hear about in the news and even in our videos. Plus, the course on the joys of problem solving is a particularly great start for our viewers, running through the fundamental decision-making processes that experts and even politicians make every day or at least the good ones do. So take a positive step in your learning and check out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking the special link in the description. Plus, the first 200 people of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.